people were not believing in you, they were not believing in the team, they were not believing in the projects. When you had the first contact with the experts, that's all right. It's not impossible, guys. We get this big responsibility to put an ESA mission on the, on the first maiden flight of, uh, of Ariane 6. If something doesn't work, right. it, it's partly my fault. At ESA, young professionals were given one opportunity. Every step, every decision, every sacrifice led to this moment. The inaugural launch of Ariane 6 and YPSAT's final test. The battery has to survive 40 days on the launch pad. The wake-up system must detect the launch and activate the onboard computer so it can begin the image capture and transmission. The execution must be flawless. But before any of this, Ariane must overcome the ghosts of past setbacks. To qualify for the flight, the YPSAT team must assemble the satellite one last time. With the final bolts tightened, the team needs to connect the battery to the subsystems. They must proceed with extreme caution, as a previous mistake fried the satellite's electronics. This moment could potentially mean the end of the mission. Sorry, can I just ask that we're all quiet? Because in the past, when it's happened, you, you sometimes hear something burning. Okay, ready to go? Sorry. They're heating the way it should be. Okay. Yes, let's just screw it in and then we're done. Yep. yep. No fried electronics today. With the satellite's final assembly complete, let's dive into the trials and challenges that YPSAT must endure to earn its place among the stars. In building a spacecraft, there's a lot of different tests that you have to do. You have to make sure that your spacecraft works the way you want it to work, and you have to make sure that it's compliant with all the regulations of the agency and of the launch provider. First of all, to ensure that the satellite will work, we have to do a TVAC test, which is thermal and vacuum chamber, to ensure that the spacecraft will survive the extreme environment in space. Next to that, we also have to do a vibration test to make sure that uh, the spacecraft will survive a launch because otherwise things could start flying around in the launcher and you could not only destroy your own spacecraft, but you could also destroy other spacecraft or even the launcher. And then we also have to be compliant with all the regulations of the launch provider and that's also where the EMC test comes into place because we, there we really have to see uh, that we don't emit any frequencies in frequency bands where we can't emit any radiations in because those bands are, for example, reserved for the navigation of the launcher. Then on the last part, we also have to do a last end-to-end -end test to really ensure that all the functionalities of the spacecraft are working as they should. In the TVEC test, um, we basically test that YPSAT works under the thermal conditions that it experiences in space. Especially the temperatures change quite drastically once we are out of the atmosphere. In that case, for, for flight hardware, for example, we, we do uh, four cycles uh, going from hot to cold, hot to cold again. And for YPSAT, that would be in orbit temperatures from minus 50 to plus 100 degrees roughly. For the vibration test, the PSAT has to be in flight configuration. That means um, everything has to be torqued. Once this is done, it is basically set on the vibration plate. And then all the vibration tests that have to be done are performed. We've tested it in the, all of the three axes. And we've also performed end-to-end -end functional tests between each test. So 
We've actually taken pictures with the cameras, making sure that all of the connections within the satellite are still working. And we can confirm now after the final testing that everything's working normally and we're ready to go to EMC testing. For us, and the main objective of the EMC test itself is to ensure the launcher compatibility. So for example, you also have like receivers and if you then have like unintentionally radiating cable nearby, it would disturb this receiver uh, and these things really happen. So you take the spacecraft and you put it on this copper table and then uh, you put an antenna before the table and you capture these radiations. Sometimes you have problems. Maybe you have like emissions uh, you don't expect it to have and these are violating limits and then you have to take action like eliminate the source. And um, we also tested immunity, that means we are creating a field and test if the functionality of the YP site is disturbed. After consolidating all the test results which we have done, now we are organizing a flight acceptance review, which is one of the traditional milestones in an ESA mission. It's an entire review board with over 15 managers and experts which have already been giving all the documentation regarding the non-conformances which we have had with all the setbacks we had and then hopefully or normally at the end of the review we can come to a conclusion that either YPSAT is ready to be shipped to the launch site or or not. <laughs> YPSAT receives the green light from the flight acceptance review which means the team can carefully package their hard work and ship it to Ariane Espace in Paris. There, it will join the other payloads bound for the spaceport in Kourou. Cleared of any damage from the journey, YPSAT will be securely bolted onto the ballast alongside its fellow passengers and receive a final recharge. The team must now trust in their work, unable to verify that anything is actually working. What they can control, however, is that the teams at ESOC and ESTEC are fully prepared to gather the data once Ariane 6 soars through the sky. So during the launch itself it will also be a very time stressful moment where we very quickly have to redo our analysis and update information for the ground stations. But still there can be uncertainties and it can be that Ariane doesn't launch exactly in the trajectory as estimated beforehand. So that's more of the operation part. I would say in the downlinking part, the ground station captures basically the radio frequency they receive. Then once the flyby is over, um, you stop the recording. Then they upload this uh, to us on a server. We retrieve that. And after that, we use a script, uh, which was the decoder, uh, the image and video decoder itself, which would take all of these data and basically reconstruct all the video and the photo from that. Operations running smoothly here at the European Spaceport in Amazonian French Guiana, where we're coming to you live as we prepare to turn the next page in space history. It's such an amazing moment. Uh, everyone here is extremely excited, nervous, happy, all the super you could find. Now just the way we start needs to wake up, do the job and bring amazing pictures uh, in the next days. So just run through what's going to happen, Tina. Coming up very shortly is the final countdown. So we will ignite uh, the main engine and after only two minutes, they have sent the rocket to about 60 kilometers of altitude using almost 300 tons of fuel. We see here the boosters are separated and one and a half minutes later the fairing that protected the satellites is ejected. Then the main engine cuts off after about seven minutes into the flight and the first stage separates, leaving the upper stage on its own. The first ignition takes the rocket to orbit and after what we call a coasting phase, there is a second boost and this will bring Ariane 6 to a circular orbit where our CubeSats will finally be released. After that, we will go into a demonstration phase 
the upper stage will flip in space and restart the Vinci engine to break and set itself on a collision course with Earth, burning up in our atmosphere and limiting space debris. À tous de DDO, attention pour moins d'une minute. So we are getting close now, concentration levels very high. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, stop! Allumage 2 SR, décollage. All of these people gathered for the exact same thing and we as YPSAT were part of this in, in an in a even more special way because we knew that our payload was on top of Ariane 6. And at some point we knew that roughly one hour 30 after the launch that's where we would have uh, started to be let's say active because there is first a, a, a full orbit and then it's at the second flyover that we start to work and that we aim to downlink the data. Each of us was in contact with some of the ground station and also some of the people at ESOC. I think some of the station should have signaled by now. Ria said that the barbecue roll probably is pointing towards deep space. The complete roll should take about six minutes, so let's hope that in six minutes we get something. Okay, it seems that Virect acknowledged something, or maybe it was not Webisode actually. I assume it didn't uh, receive any signal? We didn't see any notable signal now. So, LOS, no signal received. Copy. Most of the ground station kind of stated that they did not have a clear sign, a clear, um, let's say, spike on the actual frequency that we use, meaning that either the signal was too weak or they did not receive anything and it was just noise. I mean, this basically means that the trajectory is off. So the green one is the right uh, okay. trajectory and the... Okay, so the trajectory was not correct. So we have five ground stations that are uploading. Okay. It's super slow. We have signal from waiting for uh, Virac might have something. Okay. The rest I don't think we have. Okay. So the file is 73 gigabyte. My FTP upload says it will need about 26 hours. Yeah, we're... Okay. We have we're one. <laughs> <laughs> After working tirelessly through the night, there is not much left for the team to do. They must wait for the upload to complete to begin the decoding process. Until then, they will not know if the data contains their video and pictures, or if it is simply just noise from deep space. <laughs> so basically, um we came back from lunch uh, and then we saw that the signal was actually being replayed correctly which was exactly what we were hoping for and now it was to see if everything that was captured was enough data oh. no, it's always, it's always <laughs> yeah. oh, there, there was some issue oh. <laughs> We have the first That's video. video. Oh! 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 Oh!
We have all the pictures and a healthy video. Everything. We did it! We got it! Oh god! Oh my god! You're still here? The episode is over. What are you waiting for? You think there's gonna be a grand reveal of YP set 2, don't you? Fine. YP set 2 is gonna be bigger and much more science and hopefully much more ESA. <laughs> between us, we even might create life in orbit and make space safer for our astronauts. But you didn't hear that from me. What? You still want more? Okay, listen, YP set 2, it's coming sooner than you think. Now go, launch stuff into space or something. <laughs>